What's up everybody? It's Katya Andy. Welcome to the first long lesson, this academic course. Today I want to make something useful, a video that I'm sure will come in handy when writing a review about a book or a movie. It can be a part of your homework or it may appear in your English exam. So grab your vocabulary notebook and let's get into it. So today's lesson will be divided into different categories. We're going to look at some useful nouns, adjectives, verbs and phrasal verbs. I've got one idiom and lots of useful expressions. Number one, in your essay, you can say that someone is a larger than life character. It's someone who attracts a lot of attention because they have a lot of risk and mojo. One simple sentence about the main character in the series New Amsterdam. Max is a larger than life character. Not only is he an idealistic doctor, but also a loving husband and a caring father. Number two, the main character. The main character is the protagonist. For example, the main character is a young single mother. We can also talk about the supporting character. It's someone who has an important part, but not the leading one. For example, the supporting character is a guitarist who shows the main character around. Number three, acting. It's the job of performing in movies or plays. One simple sentence, Leo's acting is very convincing. Number four, cast. It means all the people who act in a movie or a play. For example, the cast is excellent. Number five, I like this word so much, mojo. Mojo is your magic power, your special charm that makes you successful, full of energy and attractive to people. For example, Kate has a lot of mojo. Number six, plot. It's the story of a book, movie, or play. For example, the plot is fast moving. Number seven, performance. It's the way a person performs in a movie or play. For example, Richard Madden gives a memorable performance. Number eight, role. An actor's part in a movie or play. For example, Although the new actor has a small role, he nails it. Number nine, scene. It's a part of a play, movie, or book in which the action happens in one place for a continuous period of time. My favorite scene is when the main characters are ice skating in Central Park. And number 10, soundtrack. It's the recorded music from a movie. For example, the soundtrack is very catchy. And now as we move to the second group, we're going to learn five adjectives. Number one, visually appealing or visually stunning. It means that it's very nice to look at. For example, the movie is remarkable and visually stunning. Number two, masterful. It means that it's done with great skill and understanding. For example, you could write, the movie is simply masterful. Number three, second to none, which means the best. For example, the cast is second to none. Number four, open-mouthed. It means with your mouth wide open because you're surprised or shocked. The end of the movie left me open-mouthed. And number five, terrific. Don't confuse it with terrible. They are confused words. Terrific means wonderful and excellent. For example, the special effects are terrific. And if you want to use more adjectives in your review, you can check out my super old English bit in which I've got 10 more adjectives that you could use in your review about a movie or a book. Check it out. You've got here the card 
and in the description box. And now let's move on to the third category. We're going to learn six verbs and phrasal verbs. Number one, to star. So it can be also a verb, a star and to star, which means to have one of the main parts in the movie or play. For example, Leo DiCaprio stars in the movie Killers of the Flower Moon. To star is followed by the preposition in, to star in something. Number two, to be set in a particular time or place. It means that the action in a movie, play or book happens in this place and during this period of time. One simple sentence, the movie Ghost is set in New York. Number three, we can also say to take place, which is very similar. It means to happen. Let's put it into a simple sentence. The book Tierra by Eloy Moreno takes place in Iceland. Number four, to play, which means to act in a movie. For example, the main character is played by Kate Winslet. Number five, to be let down by someone or something. This phrasal verb means to be disappointed. For example, you won't be let down by the story. And number six, the phrasal verb to lift someone up, which means to make someone feel better. For example, no doubt the movie Nayat will lift you up. I highly recommend watching this movie. And now I'd like to teach you one idiom to be at the top of your game, which means to be performing extremely well. For example, Kate Blanchett is at the top of her game in the movie Tar. And in the last category, I want to teach you 13 expressions that I'm sure will be super useful when writing a review. If you write about a very interesting book, you could use the following three expressions. Number one, you can write, it's an excellent read. Two, you can't put it down. And number three, you can say, it's a real page turner. And now three expressions that you could use to write about a super interesting movie or series. Number four, you can write, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. Or you can say, it keeps you glued to the screen. Or it's so intriguing that you can tear your eyes away. And now we're going to look at some expressions that can be used both for movies and books. Number seven, it's a definite must read or must see. Number eight, I highly recommend it to anyone who is interested in, for example, history, art, music, space, etc. Number nine, don't be put off by the title or the cover. It means don't be discouraged from reading or watching it. Number 10, it's definitely worth reading or seeing. Number 11, you can say it will appeal to, for example, teenagers or people of all ages. Bonus, you can also say the movie is aimed at teenagers, for example. Number 12, teenagers are sure to like it. And last but not least, 13, this expression can be used when you don't recommend this book or movie. And you can write, I would definitely give it a miss. So that's it for today. I really hope you found this lesson useful. And I'm sure that if you use these expressions and this vocabulary, you write an amazing review about a book or a movie. So if you enjoyed and found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to English Bits if you like my channel. And you can also find me on Instagram, EnglishBits underscore. Thank you for your time and see you next week. Ciao for now.